All right. What's going on, guys? Um, been a couple weeks since I filmed one of these, but uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've got some free time right now, and I figured I'd get another one of these knocked out. Um, this one is not really themed around anything, though I did I did limit myself to just sort of like extreme metal this time <clears throat> because I've been including a lot of uh, stuff that sort of, you know, goes outside those boundaries lately. And there might not be, you know, not all of you like that shit. So, um, back to, I guess, tradition with this channel. I started talking pretty much exclusively about uh, extreme metal, death metal, black metal, stuff like that. And that's what we're gonna return to today. Um, though, you know, there's kind of a, a bunch of different styles here. And also, well, first of all, this guy, oh, is fucking huge. Oh. This guy just turned a year old yesterday, or two days ago, and he's fucking so goddamn big. Also in this video, I'm gonna show off some stuff that I was sent from the guy who runs Bitter Misery Records. Um, he sent me a couple LPs and a few tapes, and I'm gonna go through and talk about them. I'm gonna throw that shit in at the end so I can show tapes and stuff without fucking up, like, the formula of the video. So I have five releases total that I'm gonna talk about that I was sent through Bitter Misery Records. And, um, you know, obviously the links for all that shit will be in the description. Um, yeah, but that's, we're gonna do that at the end. What we're going to start with, uh, I'm going to show a CD that I was sent. This is a new uh, 2021 full-length album. But uh, the guy who does vocals and guitars for this, uh, I'm not going to say his name because I don't know that he wants his name said. Um, I didn't ask him. Uh, he just goes by M here, but he's the guy who does uh, vocals and guitars for this. And this is Sepulchral Cult with Immurement spirits, and graveyard chants. So like I said, I've talked to these guys a bunch of times and they uh, they seemed interested in sending me a, uh, a copy of their album. And uh, I've played it a few times and it's really, really fucking good. This is what we've got going in the background right now, which I'm sure I already mentioned. Um, if you like fucking nasty, sort of old school death metal, um, but doesn't really fall into like uh, the, the sort of trendy, sound of like the the old school death metal thing that's like come back in a big way um this is is more like lo-fi and gritty uh it's really really fucking cool man it's actually a lot of it's a fun record uh from front to back yeah i'm super fucking grateful that they uh they sent me one of these um there will be an uh lp press soon through go to war x but uh until then there are copies for sale of uh, the CD for relatively cheap. Their uh, band camp and everything will be in the description below. And quickly, um, I also got signed, which is quite fucking cool. So yeah, man, check this one out. This is super fucking cool shit. Like I said, everything will be in the description below. All right, let's get into it. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time with each of these just in the interest of keeping this video uh, at, at a watchable fucking length. This is Old Nick with Forest of Grief. Normally, I, I'd let there be a bit of time between, you know, me talking about one band. Because uh, I just talked about this band, like, two videos back or something. Um, but I just got this in a couple days ago, and I, I, I'm absolutely fucking obsessed with this project. If you've not heard Old Nick, um, I mentioned it a couple videos back. Uh, but I actually uh, got the location wrong. I think I said they were from uh, like Oregon or Washington or something, but this is a California based band. And um, in terms of just being unique, I, Old Nick takes the cake. There is nothing uh, that I've ever heard that, that, you know, captures what this captures. And it's so much fun. Uh, and I mentioned the last time I talked about this band that, you know, um, it, it's like raw black metal with all sorts of uh, weird outside influences and strange instruments and stuff. Uh, most of which exists in the, you know, like synth variety. But, uh, you know, a lot of it sounds like old fucking video game music that's sort of mixed in with black metal. Now, all that being said, this is a little bit different. This is uh, this is the first, I think the first, full-length album that came out last year in 2020. 
And um, this one is, I think if you are on the fence about the sort of silly qualities that Old Nick absolutely possesses, um, if you're a little bit on the fence about that shit, this is the record to start with because this is the closest thing to like a straightforward black metal album that this project might ever do. There are some songs that absolutely uh, incorporate those weird funky elements that I love so much with this project. Uh, my favorite song on here is Haunted in the Shire. It's the first song on the B-side. Um, but also Castle of Spiders is the other good one. It's the first two songs on the B-side that uh, I specifically love about this album. Uh, this is also the first full-length album that has been put to vinyl uh, by Old Nick. Of course, this was put out through His Wounds, and I would have fucking missed this. Um, but uh, somebody on uh, Instagram sent me a message and asked if I'd grabbed it, and I didn't even know it happened. Um, so His Wounds put this out along with a few other things. Uh, but, you know, I, I managed to, to grab one of what was left. Anyway, there's the front cover right there. Really, really sort of eerie front cover, all things considered. Again, sort of outside of uh, what this project is uh, known for doing at this point. There's the back cover. This is actually the same image that was on the poster that I showed you uh, for that other compilation that I have. Um, all the track listing and shit, and it is just uh, black vinyl. Yeah, I, this is uh, limited to 200 on black vinyl, but there was a hundred on like a smoky gray color. But honestly, I'm just happy to fucking have one. Uh, so you have the old Nick logo on that side, and then the His Wounds logo on the B side. So like I said, I've kind of already accrued a uh, pretty nice stack of old Nick stuff um, that I'll kind of mention just as the days go on. But there's two more LPs. Uh, the Obscurant Visions uh, press of another one of the compilations, and uh, the Split with Hex Clock is also on its way from Phantom Blur right now. So, uh, yeah, man, expect to see a lot more of this project in the future because I'm completely fucking enchanted. Uh, if you haven't heard it, get off your ass. That's Old Nick with Forest of Grief. Um, let's talk about a, a couple bands from the Ukraine. And this first band uh, has definitely been making its rounds recently. I've, I've seen a whole bunch of people uh, post this one on Instagram and shit. And I don't have much uh, that came out through Liver Mortis. Mostly because, you know, it's hard to get or it's expensive to ship overseas or whatever. But uh, I actually got this within the States. And I'm glad I did, man, because this is a really, really good record. I don't exactly know how to say the band name. I'm gonna guess just phonetically Kekt a rock. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I might be wrong on that. I don't know. It's a fucking, it's a mess. But this is uh, Night and Love. This is the first full-length album from 2019. Uh, there's actually gonna be another full-length album that's uh, coming out this year. I think it's already, I think it already went up for pre-order and probably sold out in the pre-order. Um, but this is actually a repress of this one, so hopefully there will be a repress of the new one as well. But yeah, man, I really like this. This is a really, really good mix of uh, black metal with uh, a lot of like ambient qualities. Uh, and you know, those, those sort of ambient moments and like the acoustic passages that exist on this album sort of create just a melancholic vibe that exists, you know, over the whole thing. But you know, in terms of the black metal, uh, there's a lot of really good, like, second wave sort of black metal riffs on this one that I like a lot. Uh, the vocals are, are pretty standard, but, you know, they, they fit perfectly. And uh, I just think this is a good record. Uh, I like the album cover a lot. I like the title, Night and Love. Uh, it all sort of feeds into, like, a sort of gothy quality that this album has, but it's really good. There is the front cover right there. Uh, there's the man behind this project. I think this is one man project, but I'm not certain. Uh, but this is the guy that's, like, featured on ever everything if it's not a one man project. Back cover right there. There you have the, um, the band name there, which you'll see it in the song clip as well. Uh, but like I said, it's put out through Liver Mortis. And this is a, uh, like, foldover cover. But it's pretty, you know, it's pretty hefty, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. But there you have all the song titles, and then on the other side, right here, it says, Night is spreading her veil all over. Spirit is arisen, permeating every breath. Love comes through. We are all bounded here. 
just about to see how beautiful we are. Uh, this also includes a booklet, and in the booklet you just have uh, all the lyrics, and the lyrics are very much in line with what I just read on the inside of the cover. You also have a, uh, another picture of the man behind this project as well. Um, yeah, very cool. And the vinyl itself is just black. There's Side Night and Side Love, obviously. So yeah, man, really, really good raw sort of ambient black metal. Um, I know you guys will probably enjoy what you hear in the song clip. This is really, really great. So if you haven't heard it, check it out. That's Kekt Iraq with Night and Love. And the other band from the Ukraine that I wanted to talk about is this. This is Hate Forest with Hour of the Centaur. For as long as I've been, you know, listening to this genre of music, I have only ever been like peripherally aware of Hate Forest. Um, I don't exactly know why. I guess maybe because the band name is kind of silly and I've never been super sold on any of the album covers or anything like that. So I just never really listened to it. It's kind of one of those bands you see in passing, you know the name, just never fucking played it. But Hate Forest, as most of us probably know, just sort of uh, like reemerged after a 15 year hiatus uh, that ended in 2019. But when this album dropped last year in 2020, everybody was singing its praises. And that is what got me interested to hear it. And I'll be honest, man, this is not what I was expecting uh, from a band like Hate Forest. And to be honest, I still haven't heard uh, the previous albums, the previous four albums, because this is number five. I, I still haven't heard them, so I don't know if they're all kind of like this. I know that at some point this band switched vocalists, uh, but the vocals on here are one of the, uh, the big surprises for me because they are very, very deep, growly, sort of reverbed vocals. And just overall, this is a very brutal take on black metal. Lots of blasting drums. Uh, the, the, the guitars kind of exist within like this wall of sound and it's, it's really interesting. Like I said, I was taken off guard because I played it on YouTube for the first time. Uh, I think part in part thanks to Craig and I was truly taken by surprise. I just wasn't expecting it to sound like this, but this shit is fucking great, man. Lots of just really, really good riffs on this one. And I'm, I'm glad to have gotten one because for whatever reason, this was not made widely available in the States. Uh, I got mine through Arcane Altar. It was the only time I saw a copy pop up in the US and uh, they were gone pretty fucking quickly. So I don't really know what that's about. I mean, Osmos gets most of its shit out here. So I don't really know what happened with this specifically. But um, like I said, I'm glad to have gotten one. Uh, the album cover, kind of like all their other ones, is just a little bit uninteresting to me. There's the back cover right there. You have uh, the track listing. Like I said, this was put out through Osmos. And this was uh, 400 copies on black vinyl. And uh, it was also put on gray and gold, I think. And this also includes a 7-inch uh, a called Celestial Wanderer. And according to the back cover of this and the back cover of the 12-inch, these were both recorded in April of 2020. So um, I guess these are just bonus songs. But there's two songs on here, The Dead Talk to the Stars and Goddess with Six Serpentine Legs. Um, basically just kind of more of the same, but it's, you know, it's good shit. And uh, this is also on black vinyl. So don't be, don't be a me. If you've never heard Hate Forest, stop putting it off. Uh, this is really, really good, and I think you'll like what you hear if you've never heard it before. Though I have a feeling I was the last one to board this train. So check it out if you've not heard it. That's Hate Forest with Hour of the Centaur. <laughs> some death metal for just a minute. This is an album that also came out last year in 2020 and another album that I caught on to just a little bit late but uh, I had seen this band name all over the place for pretty much the entirety of 2020 and uh, when I finally went and listened to it uh, man I, I was super fucking impressed. This is Undeath with lesions of a different kind. This is a New York based death metal band 
and I, like a lot of the shit that's coming out f within the realm of death metal right now, uh, a lot of it exists as like a tribute to old school death metal. And this is another one of those, though I, I'd go, you know, so far as to say that this is a lot better than most of its contemporaries. And like I said, this is just the first full length album, uh, though it was following some split and demo material from 2019. Uh, all of which I haven't heard still, because I, I've just been slacking, but I've, I've also been stuck on this. Uh, this is a great fucking record. Uh, there's a lot of sort of different vocal styles on this, but they all exist like in the, the low end of deep growls. But I was actually listening to this today and I, I kind of realized that uh, the vocals on this in, in part remind me of like Frank Mullen vocals. Um, I don't know if that's just me or not, or if maybe, maybe anybody can back me up, but that's what I heard when I was listening to it earlier. I don't know. I'm also fucking crazy. The album cover is really cool. Uh, it does look like something that could have come from, you know, early 90s death metal. I dig it. This band's logo is also fucking nuts, man. There's the back cover right there. You have the pictures of the three band members. I like how uh, this guy's got his drum set set up in a fucking, in a graveyard. Yeah. So it's put out through Prosthetic Records. Uh, of all the songs on here, honestly, the title track of this one, the third song on the album, dude, the title track fucks. That riff right off the bat fucking tops, man. So goddamn good. This does include an inner sheet with some additional artwork and all the lyrics on the other side. And the version I got, I kind of just got whatever was uh, available to me. I don't exactly remember where I grabbed this. But this was just the uh, the version that I saw, and I actually think it's quite cool. Uh, it's like this sort of Coke bottle clear vinyl. 250 copies. I dig it. So, in conclusion, if you like sort of old school death metal with super deep vocals and lots of intricate guitar work, then I think you might dig it, man. That's undeath with lesions of a different kind. I'm gonna throw one more record in before I talk about the Bitter Misery stuff. And this is a record that I just got a couple weeks ago. Um, it popped up, this one actually sold out pretty quickly too through Jim's label. Uh, this is Glass Coffin with Remnants of a Cold Dead World. So Glass Coffin formed back in 2009 in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, which is not too often I get to talk about Kentucky bands. But uh, this is the one and only full-length album that this project has done so far from 2011. And this full-length album exists literally like smack dab in the middle of a discography that's built on like splits and EPs. And this one has a, a really charming lo-fi quality to it. Uh, lots of good riffs on this one, like sort of crackly vocals. Um, just high energy, good shit, man. Uh, I noticed the, the drums on this one kind of sound like, uh, they're, it's like being played on like cardboard drums, but like in a good way. But man, like if you listen to this, I think the song, I think this has an intro and the song We Bleed the Blood of Hate is like the first proper song. But the way that song starts, uh, with, with just like the really quick instrumentation and then it stops with like this creaky sort of like scream that, that goes on and then the music starts again. It's badass, man. Uh, yeah, I fucking, I, I dig it a whole lot. So there's the album cover right there. It's this dude in like a, his robe and he's got like a flail. Uh, really, really cool. There's the back cover right there. Again, the flail and uh, these little motherfuckers. I don't know if these guys exist everywhere, but they definitely exist here and they're fucking like this big and they're horrifying. But this was put out on gyms, like I said, limited to 100 copies, and uh, all 100 copies come on this sort of green, marbly colored vinyl. First of all, I love that fucking label. Really, really cool. But yeah, it's like a greenish gray, marbly color. Uh, yeah, side B, very cool. Correction, that's side A, I'm retarded. So if you like high energy, lo-fi, black metal, Glass Coffin is right up your alley. Check it out, that's Remnants of a Cold Dead World. <laughs> Thank you.
God damn it, we got two more records and a few cassettes to talk about. This is the Bitter Misery stuff. And I'm gonna start off with uh, my favorite of the two LPs that I was sent. Uh, this is a, fuck, I think it's technically a demo, but this is Vamitar with Evil Witching Black Metal. This is a US based band, I think they're based in California. And uh, just two guys in this one, but uh, this is the first release from this band from last year. I think this band only formed last year in 2020 as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the first and only release and it is a demo, I just checked. And it's pretty short, I think it's like 21 minutes long or something like that. And uh, this one creates just like this, a really, really nice aura of aggression with really sharp, kind of ghostly vocals. Uh, lots of good memorable riffs on this one. I, there's not really much to complain about here But I do really like the uh, the sort of aggressive quality that this one brings I like the blasting drums and the the sort of wall of noise effect that this one doesn't really take to the extreme It's not like blender metal or anything like that uh, But it's definitely you know, it's definitely an aggressive take on black metal and uh, I dig it album cover is the two guys from the band right there I like this band's logo a lot too, it's quite cool. Back cover, you have both members of the project right there and all four song titles. This, like I said, all of this stuff is put out through Bitter Misery Records. And this is uh, Bitter Misery Records or BMR001. 200 copies on black vinyl. I think there was a clear vinyl version of this as well, but uh, 45 RPM. And you have a really nice picture and all the lyrics. So definitely check this one out, man. This is a really good first outing from this band. That's Vamitar with Evil Witching Black Metal. All right, final LP of the video. This is a band that's actually based in Indonesia, uh, which is strange. I honestly don't know if I have a record from another band from Indonesia. But this is Forbidden Tomb with Templum Impiorum. Uh, probably not how you say that, my apologies. But goddamn man, this is a band that's uh, off to a busy start. They got fucking two demos, two full length albums, a couple of splits, a compilation, all within the last year. But this is uh, the second album that came out last year in 2020. And uh, this is really good, man. It's it's very, very like lo-fi raw black metal. But I know goddamn well that appeals to all you dorks and it appeals to me as well. But I really like the intro to this one because it sort of sets the mood perfectly for the remainder of the album. It just kind of sounds like dripping water in like a sewer or something like that. And uh, then like the sound of like tolling bells. Uh, really, really cool, man, very interesting. But the music on here, the black metal, is quite simple and repetitive, but that's, for me, that's the best way to approach the really raw black metal sound. Um, you know, if, if it is simple and, you know, more repetitive, it's a lot easier to grasp onto and it makes that shit memorable too. And the vocals on this are, are basically exactly what you picture if I were to say they sound fucking tortured. But they, you know, everything here is cold and sharp and uh, I like that shit a lot and I know you guys do too. So the album cover is quite cool. It just kind of looks like it's some sort of ancient temple or something like that. Um, same shit on the back. You got uh, all the song titles. Again, Bitter Misery Records. Again, just black vinyl. Uh, this one might have had another variant as well. Maybe clear or white, something like that. Or maybe I'm making that up entirely. There's your inner sheet there. One side, uh, I like Order of the Abyssal Moon. But uh, that other side is super fucking cool, man. Yeah, give this one a shot, man. If you like cold, raw black metal, uh, then uh, you, you're not gonna have any fucking trouble liking this. It's really good shit. That's Forbidden Tomb with Templum Impiorum. All right, let's get into the tapes. Uh, but first, I wanted to show this as well. This is another thing that uh, I was sent in the package. Um, Bitter Misery issue number one. Uh, it's like a, you know, it's just got like interviews with a couple of the bands. But anyway, it, it mentions what bands here. Vamitar, Forbidden Tomb, Appear, 
which I don't know if that's how that's said, but I'll, I'll talk about that band in a minute. And then a band called Panzer War. Uh, but yeah, man, it's cool. I like, I like seeing shit like this because it's more or less pretty rare now. Uh, but yeah, interviews, shit like that, really nicely done, very cool. All right, goddammit, let's finish this shit off. Um, the first tape we're gonna talk about here is my favorite, I think my favorite thing that I was sent through Bitter Misery. This is Temple of Abraxas with 1931. So this is a 2021 album, I think. I guess this is supposed to be like an exploration of the vampire. Um, it, you know, how it, as it exists within different cultures, which I think is awesome. But what I like about this is that, well, first of all, first of all, the drum performance on this is fucking incredible. Really, really good stuff. Or at least it just stands out, uh, to me more so than a lot of things do. Uh, but, you know, there's great riffs on this and a lot of little intricacies that make each song stand out from the other songs. But, you know, there's just lots of layers, lots of good riffs, and, uh, another thing I thought was interesting is there's, like, this sort of disembodied voice that reappears, uh, throughout the album. Uh, I don't know if it's the same one or not, to be honest, but, uh, you know, their disembodied voice thing is something that reappears a bunch of times on this. But, uh, White Vinyl? <sighs> The tape itself is white and the card just has like uh, extended artwork with all the track listing and shit. And uh, to give you guys an idea of what this sounds like along with the other two cassettes I'm going to show you, uh, I am going to include some So check that one out for sure man, that's Temple of Abraxas with 1931. Yeah. We have up here, U P I R. I guess I don't know how if it's up here. Uh, split with Forbidden Tomb. But since I already talked about Forbidden Tomb, I'll talk about up here uh, for just a second. It's a Canadian band, and uh, when I looked into it, they've they've only got like a handful of songs. No full length albums or anything yet. But you know, total, there's only like six or seven songs that are kind of distributed through you know, small releases, singles, and shit like that. Now this, this one, man, the, huh, this whole release sounds like it exists in like a fog of lo-fi grit. Uh, the up here vocals sound very distant and they're kind of like howls in parts, uh, but they sound distant and pained. It's super cool. And uh, the Forbidden Tomb side of this one is super fucking noisy. Like the guitars sound scratchy in a way that don't really know how to describe. But you know, the riffs are audible and the riffs are, are good. So there's the album cover for this one. This is limited to, fuck, I think it was a hundred, but I don't know. Yeah, you got a side each, but there's just one up here song and uh, three Forbidden Tomb songs. But there's the card. Uh, you got a little image for each of the projects here. Very nice. So again, this is a good one. I'm gonna put the uh, up here song in the uh, like song clip here since you already heard Forbidden Tomb. But yeah, man, check it out. That's the split with up here in Forbidden Tomb. And fucking finally, uh, this is probably gonna be a long video. I do apologize. This is Mara Becca with Chaos of the Elder Race. So this is actually a, uh, an English band, and this is one of a, a handful of 2020 releases. Uh, and this is just an EP. And this is quite a fun one, man. Uh, one of the things I, I noticed about this one that sort of stands out is uh, that there are guitar solos, and guitar solos in like raw black metal is not something that, that you hear all that often. Uh, so it's, it's quite interesting, but uh, uh, you know, on the other hand, the, the vocals on this one kind of sound like they're being recorded from like the other end of like a maze of fucking hallways. So this is definitely a cool one, man. The, uh, the production is, is rough, but it's effective, uh, along with all of this shit. So the tape itself, is gold. I think this one was limited to 50. Yeah. Uh, there's your J card there. Shot of the uh, guy behind this. I guess he goes by Morbid. And it looks like it is just one guy. Um, but there's your track listing. 
Yeah, love this one. But yeah, man, definitely check this one out. That's Marabeka with Chaos of the Elder Race. God damn. That's it. This is a this is going to be a long one. This is upwards of an hour of filming. So, I'm going to hopefully cut it down to 35 minutes or so. Because uh, I do spend a lot of time fucking around putting things back in the sleeves and stuff like that So hopefully I can cut it down to where it's not a super long video But uh, again massive thanks uh, to the guy who runs bitter misery records for sending this stuff over All of that shit is gonna be in the description. I'm gonna have links uh, Every link that I can find for any one of these projects is all gonna be down there so uh, hopefully you guys enjoy some shit. Uh, definitely support Bitter Misery Records financially because that's what really fucking matters. And uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Fuck. Talk soon, guys. Later.